ahead. Welcome to the marriage of Nate and Kirsten. Who gives Kirsten to be married to Nate? Her mother and I, her father. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. You face me for a little while. <laughs> I told them they could face me, and they said they didn't want to. Um, <laughs> Nate and Kirsten are so honored that you, their family, and friends are here for their celebration today. Kirsten and Nate desire to enter into the covenant of marriage before God. The two of you have chosen to be married in a sacred ceremony that was created not by man, but by God himself. At the very beginning of time, God designed man and woman to come together in marriage. Right after God created them in the second chapter of Genesis, Adam declares, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She, she, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. It is very significant that Eve came from Adam's side. For the rest of their lives, there she would be at his side. Can you imagine Adam seeing Eve for the first time? That's why he said, whoa, man, just like you were thinking when you saw her down, coming down the aisle. This relationship was for them, but it was also to be an example of intimacy Jesus wants with each of us. He describes himself as the bridegroom and his followers as the bride. The hope we have as believers in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is the wedding feast when we are joined with Christ for eternity. Our earthly marriages are a foretaste of that glorious day we are waiting for. You know what waiting is all about, right, Nate? We were waiting, but you made her wait for long, and we can't wait for that day when the Lord comes. What a day that'll be. The desire that you have to be married is what God intended. His plan for you two is to become one and walk together as a team. What a great thing that the Lord has brought you two together. God desires to be in a relationship with us as individuals. He created us to walk with him. When he instituted marriage, he described it to be that relationship in which a husband and wife, or he desired to be in that relationship, pardon me, with the husband and wife to help hold it together. In Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12, it says, Two are better than one. 
because they have good reward for their labor. Boy, I could see that in your lives, what that's going to be. As soon as you're married, you'll be going on a mission trip together as husband and wife. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lay down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be a warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Cursing innate. When you make the Lord the third strand in your marriage, it will be strong and will not easily be broken. Okay, now you can face each other. Nate, do you take Kirsten to be your wife to live together in the holy covenant of marriage? Kirsten, do you take Nate to be your husband to live together in holy covenant of marriage? Now that you have declared your commitment to walk with each other, Nate, this is what the Bible requires of you. It says in the book of Ephesians that you are love, to love Kirsten just as Jesus loved the church. As beautiful, kind, and lovely as Kirsten is, that calling requires God's help. You cannot do it alone. God desires and is willing to give you the strength to love Kirsten just as he has loved us. Kirsten, the Bible calls you to respect Nate as the leader of the family. You will also need God's help to do this. Remember that God is bigger than Nate's biggest mistake. As Nate leads your family, remember to be a sail and not an anchor in this relationship. Pray for him, support him, and encourage him. Remember, this love does not preserve marriage. Marriage preserves love. The commitment carries us through times when feelings may wane. Wise people have said what got them through decades of rewarding marriage was a commitment to the commitment. Denying oneself, desiring the best for the other is key. You are called by God to love the other more than yourself because you are one. I believe that's something that's lost in our society now. We're seeing a whole society wanting to love themselves and no longer trying to love the other person more than themselves. True joy is what it stands for, that acronym, joy. Jesus first, other second, you last. That's joy. You seal this commitment to each other with a vow. A vow is the strongest commitment we can make before God or man. They are not entered into lightly. Nate and Kirsten have written their vows. Are you ready to make your vows with each other? Yes? Okay. Nate, face Kirsten and share your vow. Kirsten, Kirsten, I love you. And you know I'm not well with writing these, so I'll keep it short. But <laughs> sorry. Kirsten, you are so beautiful. I love you. You are kind, you are patient, you are humble. You always encourage me to seek God first. So from this day on, I vow to seek God first in, the, in everything we do. I vow to love you and to serve you as Christ served the church, sacrificially, tenderly, patiently, and humbly. Now I know this won't be easy to do, and I might fail sometimes, so I will... I vow to look to God 
asking the Holy Spirit for strength to do these. And um, I just pray that as we both look to God for our strength, that they would overflow in my life and into yours as we come together as one. First sin, are you ready to share your vow with me? How do I hold this in? <laughs> Is that okay? Yes. Nathaniel, you are my best friend. And even more beautiful is that you are the love of my life. I have dreamed of this day with you to become one. <laughs> As we move forward into our unity, I, devout, devote, I vow to devote myself to the Lord so I can follow his lead and know his love so that I can love you as he has loved us. I vow to read the way of love in 1 Corinthians 13 and to set my heart on loving you in this way. I read it. it. says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Love hopes all things, love endures all things, and love never ends. I vow to spend the rest of my life pursuing to love you in this way. I pray my love for you would be an outpouring and overflow of the love I have received in Christ, just as you said too. I pray we would, ju we would set our minds on things above where Christ is seated and not on things of the earth. And all that we do, may we work heartily as for the Lord. I pray our marriage would be a glimpse and foreshadowing of our marriage to Christ to come. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Thanks. I vow to respect and submit to you in the Lord. I love you. Amen. Excellent. Nate and Kirsten wish to use rings as a visible testimony of their vows that you have made today. The circle has no beginning and no end is an, and is symbolic of their never-ending commitment. Okay, Nate, you're going to put this on her ring finger, and you're going to say, Kirsten, with this ring, I seal my vow of love and devotion to you. Well done. <laughs> okay, Kirsten. Nate, with this ring... I seal my vow of love and devotion to you. Excellent. Nate and Kirsten wanted their first act as a couple after they've sealed their vows with rings to remember their Savior Jesus Christ in communion. They remember their selfless act of Jesus Christ who humbled himself the very creator of the universe did not come to be served, but rather to serve. He is our example.
with this act of remembrance, they have committed to serve one another in marriage rather than to be served. Jesus clearly states in the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 9, what God has joined together, let no man separate. As a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pronounce you husband and wife. Hold it. <laughs> Nate, you may kiss your bride. It is my great privilege to introduce you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Nate Yadow. <laughs> Yay! I believe they'll be doing pictures for a while and then they'll join us later on over here. So thank you for coming, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and um, congrats to Nate and Kirsten. Thank you.